Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Today we're going to be cooperatively defusing bombs that are on a ship. Now today we're going to go over just the rules of how to play Fuse. This is a 1 to 5 player. It is a timed game. It takes exactly 10 minutes from Renegade Games. Today we're going to do a rule school and show you how to play. Essentially you're going to be able to skip the rule book, watch this video and dive right in. So let's take a look. Fuse is a cooperative game in real time that takes exactly 10 minutes to play and you'll be trying to defuse as many bombs as you can. Over the course of the game, you'll be following some certain rules on the cards to try to put specific dice. Sometimes you'll be building pyramids and other times you'll be building big stacks of die. You're moving fast because it's timed, but don't knock it over because then they all have to go back in the bag. To defuse bombs, sometimes you'll be following rules for colors and mathematics as well as making some dice larger and smaller than others in order to defuse bombs. And even when you're successful, when new bombs come out, sometimes you'll get a fuse and people will have to lose more dice. And it's all tracked with an online free app from Renegades Game Studio, which helps you keep time, puts a little fun into it, and allows you to keep score. Clear the last bomb and you win. But think quick and cooperate with your friends because if you can't use a die, it gets rolled and you must remove a die from one of your bombs that matches a color or number. The first thing you'll do in setup is separate out the fuse cards and the bomb cards. The fuse cards have numbers one through six and all five colors of the die. Now, if you have a first edition of this game, you may have two cards of each of these by uh, accident. Uh, you can simply either only keep one of each of these cards, or you can use all the fuse cards and just shuffle them together. It's your choice. Either way, you separate these out from the bomb cards. Also, from the bomb cards, you'll want to separate out five cards that have a number six in the top right corner. These are extremely difficult cards, and we recommend you don't start playing with these. Now, making sure that these fuse cards are still separated and outside on their own, you're going to shuffle the bomb cards and you're going to give two to each player. Here, we have four players. Each of them have two cards. If the first card of anybody is a four or a three, their second card must be a one or a two. This is just to make sure that nobody starts the game with two cards that are both threes or fours. In a solitaire game, you'll give yourself four cards, making sure that you have at least three different values. Here we have a two and a three and a four. We have a second four, but that's okay because we have three different values. If you don't have at least three different values, you will then replace cards with new cards. Now from those bomb cards, we're going to create a deck with a certain amount of cards depending on the number of players and the difficulty. Now we're playing with four players here and we want to do a training mission. So in this deck, we have just placed 19 cards of those bomb cards. The rest of the cards that were in that big stack just get put back in the box. You won't need them for this game. And as you can see, there's more cards depending on the amount of players and which mission you want. Training, standard, expert, elite, or insane. And from that deck you just built, you will then place face up five bomb cards. Do you remember those fuse cards we set aside earlier? What you'll do is you're going to shuffle these on their own and then add six to this bomb deck and then you're going to shuffle this bomb deck all together so that there's six random fuse cards mixed within this bomb deck. Next you'll take all 25 dice and place them inside the fuse bag. And I highly recommend at this point to download the Renegade Game Studios companion app. This can be found on Android and iOS. Don't look for Fuse, look for Renegade Game Studios companion app. Download this. This will be a specific 10 minute timer for Fuse. You can use any 10 minute timer you like, but this one is much more interactive and will make your experience a lot more fun. Here's the app in motion. You basically just select a personality voice or a basic voice. I recommend the personality voice. It's much more fun. You have a 10 minute timer and once you start it, it will start. And it will continue to talk to you throughout and you'll just keep this going. And this will run the entire time. If for some reason you need to pause it, you can do so. Now let's get into how a round works. Now Fuse is real time, it's played without stopping and through that 10 minute timer and one person is going to have this bag and they will take out the amount of dice equal to the amount of players and this is for a 3 to 5 player game. They would take out in this case 4 dice because we have 4 people and they would roll them in front of everybody. 
Now, if they take out more dice than what's needed by accident, they throw them all back in the bag and they deal up to the amount of players. So you can take out less if you want to be sure. Maybe you take out two at a time or one at a time, but you're trying to go as fast as you can. And again, since this is a four player game, we drew four die. If you're playing a two player game, there's an exception where you draw four dice, basically two per player. And in a solitaire game, you draw three dice. Now that the dice are there, all four players are talking about which dice they'd like to take or which of the dice are the only ones they could take because each player has to take no more than one die and one die exactly and that's with three to five players. So here this player has every player's two bomb cards and they're trying to figure out where to place them. And most cards don't matter which order you put them in, some of them do. In this case, they can put this in any order. This could be any color, number five, any number yellow die, or exactly a green two. And on the second card, this is sort of a pyramid. The bottom two, you'd put the six of any color. The bottom right of the pyramid, you'd put a five of any color. And on top of the pyramid, you'd put a four. So this one, you either have to play a six or a five first of any color, and that there. So from these dice, literally the only one that this person could place is this black six, because they could place this here like this. So they say, hey, look guys, the only one I can place is the black six. I'm going to place it there because they don't have a five here. There's not a five. There's no yellow and there's no green tooth. So that's the only one they can place. And they'd really tell everyone, hey, I really need this. Well, this player also says, wow, the only die I could have used was a six. So we're kind of in a tough spot because this guy could use a six of any color, a five of any color, or a one of any color. And this one, anytime you see a line going across, this means they're going to stack up on top of each other. And the order is, it has to be any yellow die, then a red, then a blue, and then a green. So over multiple rounds, they would be, this player would be trying to place a yellow, a red, a blue, and then a green, and that would complete this bomb. Now, if any time one of these stacked ones fall over, you have to take them all and put them back in the bag. But in this case, yellow's first, can't do any of those, and we don't have a six, five, or one. So this player's gonna get stuck. Let's look at the other players. Now this player can play either any black die or any color number one, any black or any color number two, any black, any color number three. In this case, it's a pyramid. The bottom is either gonna be a green or a three. So they have a bunch of options. They could literally use any one of these die, but maybe they uh, grab the three, and they place it there. It could have been any color three and they're starting their pyramid. Remember, all this is happening simultaneously. Everyone's talking about which die they should take or what they can take while the time is ticking. Now this one is another one of those stack ones, but this says, hey, each number that you stack on top has to be greater than the other number. So putting a four here isn't good because uh, the lowest number you could put here is a three. It would be a three, then a four, then a five, then a six. And so this, neither of those numbers would work there, but we can place a number here. This says any color number, uh, it, pretty much anything can go here. But once I place this die here, my next die has to equal this, either a number or a color. So the next number, next die would have to be either a four of any color or a green of any number. Now remember, each player needs to take one and only one with three to five players of the dice. And this one's left over because this player did not play it. So this die will get rolled. And any player that has either a black or a one has to take one die off their board. So this is a four and a green, it's safe. This is a three and a green, it's safe. This is a black. So this die and this die will get taken off and will be put back in the fuse bag. Now, if there were two dice that were not being able to be placed, let's say it was like this, and let's just say these were not able to be placed, then in any order, these would get rolled. So we would roll this. This is a six or a black. These two are safe. And then this one would get rolled two are black and those are safe just these would go back in the bag this fuse bag would then pass to the next player where they would start a whole new round remember the time is ticking and they would take out four new dice and they would roll them out like that now if you were playing a two player game player one player two each player has to take two dice no more no less and if there's some left over you resolve it the same way i just showed you in a solitaire game that player is getting four cards but there's only going to be three dice taken out every time and they have to use all three of these dice the ones that don't get used get resolved in the same fashion i just showed you now when the next set of dice come out let's say this player is able to play this remember they just need to equal the number or the color and they get this uh, they would complete their bomb and this is what happens they would take the completed dice and throw them in the fuse bag. 
They would then take this and place it near themselves face down. These will score points later. They then take any one of the five bomb cards that are up there and they place it in front of themselves and then they flip a new bomb card. Notice I chose an easy bomb card because I already have a four. If you have a three or a four, it's usually a good idea to take a one or a two because you don't want to be working on two hard bombs at a time. Now in games where you take more than one die, a match with two player or solitaire, it's possible that you may take a die here and complete a bomb and then this one cannot be taken. In this case, you cannot place this die even after getting a new bomb card. So let's say this one gets resolved and we score this bomb and the next bomb card we get is this. We cannot place this here even though we normally could because that gets resolved after and you'd have to roll that and take off any dice possibly as normal. Now if when replacing the bomb card one of these fuse cards comes up that we shuffled in at the beginning of the game, this gets resolved just as if a die was not able to be placed at the end of a round. So this, everybody has to remove a 2 if they can, 1, 2. And so here on the board we see this player would have to get rid of his 2, and this would go back in the fuse bag. If it were, maybe they're all either numbers or they're colors. Sometimes you'll have to get rid of a color. Everyone that has can see a green one would get rid of it. So this player would have to get rid of his green 3 back in the fuse bag. Now let's say a 2 fuse came out. This player actually had played a 2 yellow on his pyramid, but a red die was on top of it. When the 2 comes out, it's only the dice you can see. So because all they can see is a 1 red, they would not need to get rid of the 2 below it. Two players complete bombs at the same time, and one is resolving and bring out a fuse card. This would not affect a card that's just been completed. Normally you'd have to take off one of these two twos, but since this card was completed as well, these do not come off. This person can still resolve his completed bomb. Once a fuse card is resolved, just take it out of the side of the game. I'd say just place it next to the deck. You will score you points later, and then take another one. If it's another fuse card, resolve it again. Otherwise, that's the next bomb that's available for people to take. Sometimes you may screw up, and in this case, we see we need a yellow or a red die. Well, previously, this was supposed to be a red or a blue. This is blue or green. This one's correct, but later on, he just realizes that he put a wrong die here. If that happens, that player must take all these dice and put them back in the fuse bag and start over. This will continue till one of two things happens. You win, and how you do that is by clearing all the bombs. Now remember, there was a fuse deck here, but over the course of the game, we've emptied them all out, and there's only two middle uh, bomb cards that people can take next. Let's say this player finishes this card, and they take this bomb. And let's say this player gets this card, and this happens. As soon as this is cleared, you win the game. You do not need to get rid of the two cards in front of you. You just need to clear all the bomb cards. Now, in the insane level of the game, which is the hardest, it makes you also clear all the cards that are in front of you to win the game. Or you'll lose by not clearing out all the bombs before the time expires. Ouch. And whether you've won or lost, you'll be getting a score. The app actually helps you uh, calculate that score by answering a bunch of questions. It will give you a final score. And later on, it actually has a section that you can look at all your high scores from previous. If you're not using the app, you can manually tabulate the score on the back of the rule book. And if you're tabulating it manually, you'll get 10 points if you won. You'll also get one point for every full 10 seconds left on the clock if you won. You'll get the total points of all the numbers of all the cards that you, all the bombs that you've diffused. And you'll get two points for each of the fuse cards that you went through and activated. Now I've showed you some of the cards and what the icons mean. Let's run through a few more. This one obviously needs to be a four of any color. The next one has to be smaller than this, but any color. And then smaller than that one in any color. This one is any color, but then it has to equal that color, equal that color, equal that color. So whatever color you put first has to be the same all the way through. Those are the same thing, but they cannot be the same. Once you see again, four different colors there of any value. Here's gonna be two dies of the same color, two dies of the same number, but they could be any color. Here we have a red or a black, plus a blue or a two of any number has to equal a seven. Here we have this die minus that die has to equal a two and they can be any color. Here you add these two and they have to equal these two and they can be any colors. This die has to equal this die, which also has to equal this die, but this one has to be blue. 
This is a pyramid, and when you see question marks, it literally can be any die. So it's any two die stacked, then a one yellow, then any two on top of it. This is any color and number has to equal this color and number. So basically, whatever die you put here, the exact same die has to go there. And this one is you put any number and you put a number here. And this one has to be smaller than both of those numbers. Well, I hope that allowed you to dive right into the game, skipping the rule book. If you have any other questions, just go ahead and leave them here as comments. I'll do my best to answer them. We'll see you next time.